I remember playing with chalk as a kid. I loved it. We used to draw all sorts of drawings on the street. Do you remember that, cameraman? Oh, yeah. I loved it. Never did I think, years later, we would be putting chalk in our nails. I mean, I get it. It might save money, but it's a lot of work. I'm going to ask an expert the question. Can we use chalk in our acrylic powder to generate a whole bunch of color? And I'll be using my white and gold brush and my crystal dish for monomer. Available now at nailcareer.com. Welcome, Jim. Hi, how are you? Hi, Susie. I'm well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So I have okay. asked you to come on my channel again because we have another question for myself and the viewers. A lot of people are taking chalk and grinding it all up into a fine powder and adding it to their white or clear powder, combining it with monomer and making nails to simulate all these colors. And I get why they're doing it. They're trying to save money to expand their acrylic color collection. Can we do this? Is it a good idea? Chalk is natural. What do you think? Chalk is natural. I, I think that you're going to be fine putting it into acrylic. I would not advise using it in a gel. But in acrylic, at a low concentration, you should be fine. Really? Okay. Yeah. So my concern yeah. is, I was wondering if you would say that. That's why we thought we'd have you on. My concern is putting it in an e-file inside of a dish and then grinding it up, the big plume of chalk. Is that a bad thing to be breathing that in? No. It's an irritable dust. Really? But as long as you're not you know, breathing in a lot, mm -hmm. it's not something dissimilar to what you might experience in a windstorm, how it blows dust across the road. Right. Okay. Right. right. So if you did it constant, or, it would irritate. Or, you know, your kids, the teachers, when we were kids, we had chalkboards, not dry erase boards. And those kids would go outside and slam. We the used to do that. Together. They cleaned them. <laughs> yep. Similar. Okay. Chalk is made out of calcium carbonate, which is a really, really soft rock. Right. Calcium carbonate is also a product that's used in Tums and antacid. Yeah. And so we digest calcium carbonate regularly. Some of us more frequently than others. So if that's the case, digesting this or inhaling it, it really isn't going to be that much of a big deal. Really? I wouldn't suggest it for long periods of time. Yeah. But for short periods of time, you'll be fine. Now, if you put too much into the acrylic, what it could do is throw off the curing process. That's my concern. And it could make the finished product weak. Right. But we always put in, some people are putting in like glitter into That's acrylic true. powder, right? We do. That would do the same thing. So as long as you don't exceed concentrations of glitter that you'd normally put in, which should be somewhere in that 3 to 5% range, You'll be perfectly fine. So it's really kind of no different than when we're adding pigment powders to our white acrylic powder. It's really the same if we're adding the chalk. Same, same. This is awesome. Every time I've asked you if we could do something, usually it's a no. <laughs> but this time you've actually said yes. You've made my day. You made our I day. I saying yes. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Well, I think a lot of people are going to be very happy about that. Because my okay. first reaction was nope. But then I thought, I'm so glad that we asked the expert. I'm glad you called. I am too. My Thank pleasure. you so much. That was a good question to answer. I think that would help a lot of people if they're wondering. And me too. I learned something. And you know what I'll do? Yeah. I'm going to buy some chalk. Yeah. And then I'll run it through the lab. Oh, and okay. And we'll make sure that it works. And if really? I find something, anything other than what know. I have just told you, I'll call you. Really? Okay. That's awesome. Well, okay. we heard it from Jim himself. That's excellent news. Thank you so much, Jim. I really appreciate your time. Thanks. See you later. All right, Susie. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Well, you know what that means, you guys. We heard it from the expert. That means I'm going to do a set of pastel chalk nails. Okay, I've removed the nails off of this hand. When I remove, I leave a thin little layer on there to protect my natural nail because I'm taking them off and on all the time. And we are going to select a color here. Let's start with, I think, this really pretty purple color. Now, he did say not very much. The do's are we can do it, but the don'ts are don't use so much because that is going to interfere with the curing process. And I got a feeling, actually, now that he's given us a green light, we can file it with an e-file but wear a mask. You can do it this way, but I think it's gonna take a lot of elbow grease 
And that's an old fashioned way of saying, you know, just really grinding it down and doing this over and over and over and over and over. So the e-file would be probably more beneficial in a particular situation like this. You could maybe try a coffee grinder. Ooh, cameraman, go get me your coffee grinder. Uh, <laughs> I like to keep the coffee clean. This is natural. A it little is. bit of, it'll be purple coffee. <laughs> I, I like my coffee black. Okay, so I'm going to pour this purple into this dish. Now, I'm doing a lot, but I just need a pinch into the white, right? I'm shaking the whole place here. We're gonna grind up some yellow and we're gonna do the blue too. I like the blue too. It's kind of fun though, I have to say. A lot of work before I even start doing the nails. Okay, I've grinded four colors, ground, grinded, and I'm going to mix my, I'm just showing you how much I did. Um, I, I really believe it's got to be just a very little bit, like a pinch and I really want a pastel look anyway. So I am just going to show you how much I'm putting in. Literally like that. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's really soft. That's what I really wanted, soft. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna set my whole table up and we are gonna form them up and start creating nails. Okay, so my nails are buffed up, ready to go. I did have to wash my hands because I got chalk everywhere and it's all over the table and all over me apron. Good thing I was wearing one so it doesn't ruin my shirt. Okay, so with any good system, use your prep and prime. So I'm just gonna put my let's prep on. And give that a second to dry and then I'm going to put my let's bond on and for anyone that doesn't know when you put your primer or bonder or anything like that put it on much more gently don't oversaturate the nails it's very important okay and now I want to introduce my forms I'm going to show you guys I'm so proud of these they're so pretty so a form is you know these are designed a little longer and they've got some diagrams on here for you what I feel you need in 30 years of experience this is what I have always wanted in a form so I'm going to form up my thumb so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on forms really I just want to get this chalk down so we can see the nails it's really about the chalk just give it a little pinch for shape okay and I do want to brag a little bit I gotta brag about this you see guys see my crystal dish I'm calling it Jewel of the Nail. It's the little things. I'm just gonna put some monomer in here and I don't need too much. I'm just doing one hand. Um, you know, I might have to add a little bit more. This is fast setting, so it's gonna have a little bit of more evaporation. Oh my goodness, I have lots of new things in my new brush. White and rose gold. Okay, so let's get to it. And I'm going to do French, so I'm going to do turn this at a different angle sometimes. I'm going to do it old school. I'm going to do it the old way. But I can't wait to see what this looks like. So we just have a little bit in the jar. So I just got to bang it so it's on one side so I can grab a full bead. Now because there is chalk in it, I would imagine I might have to work with it a little bit wetter just because chalk might absorb and change the liquid to powder ratio at least it might feel that way a little bit so because I've never done this with this in here just gonna feel it out and see what it needs oh it sure is a pretty color it feels pretty good I think because I stuck with the rule of what Jim said in very very little which was good because the look I'm going for is very pastel. If I wanted a stronger color and I added a lot more, 
don't know if that would be advisable. I, I wouldn't do that. I would just do the tiniest amount like what I did. I wouldn't say it's drying up any faster though. I'm getting a I'm getting time here to manipulate that French the way I want it. And yes, I am gonna go long and almond. I imagine the consistency of mixing the color might not be quite as good as let's say one of those companies who, you know, really took a long time to mix it very, very thoroughly. If you're doing it yourself, you might not mix it quite as long as they might. Okay, I'm just gonna keep building this guy out. It's actually feeling pretty good. I'm actually a little, little surprised actually. I thought it was gonna feel icky, but I did do a very little amount. So what's the consistency like in comparison? It feels pretty good, I think, because I put very, very minimal amount in. Like if I put a lot more, I think it would really feel different. Right. But because I put so little in, it doesn't feel really too much different, to be honest with you. But I do notice that because it's not perfectly mixed by machine or maybe long enough or you do get inconsistencies of right i see color. a little patch that's exactly patches, right so. yeah so that I mean, could have been i mean i really ground it up and you ground it up so between the yeah. two of us we really you know well maybe we should have used the coffee grinder yes so and I, had yellow coffee for the next or an e-file i don't drink coffee but caramel does and oh, he's yeah. very very particular or an e-file, yes, I could have definitely used the e-file, but I didn't do that either. Yeah, see, when I do these little points up the side, that would roll a bit easier, I think, with the acrylic, a little more detail, a little more finer, but it's not doing it as easy with this in it. But that's not really worth enough to not try this. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a small sacrifice to try it. And that's if you do your Frenches this way. Okay. And I'm going to go longer. This is too short. I really want to see the color. So we're just going to add... This sure is pretty color. There's a big clump of yellow. I'm going to take it right out of there and see if I can get a smoother patch on top of there. Maybe after squishing it, we had to whisk it or something to blend it more. Well, then that's what a, an e-file or the coffee grinder would have been good. On the other hand, maybe it creates a nice uneven Yeah, it can quality. look like a little marbly look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Depends on what you're going for. That's the word I was looking for. Marbly. marbly. Yeah. I don't think that is actually a word. Marbly. Marble. I make words up. Marbled would probably be the way to say it. Super pretty. Mm -hmm. I love pastel yellow, but I'm not supposed to wear it. It doesn't go good with my skin tone. It might have a green tinge to my skin. So it, you know, like olive. And it was much better when I was younger, but when you're um, a bit of a greenish tinge, yellow isn't. Here I am wearing a vintage kind of creamy shirt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think it's really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to switch my yellow out. And just to complete this nail so we can move forward on all the other colors, just so you know what I'm doing, I've got a mixture of my foundation pink and my pink tint. It's about 50-50. And I'm going to do the nail bed part, the nail plate. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'll get to feel the difference between the chalk induced and the professionally mixed. Infused. Infused, that's a good word. And um, it feels much the same, to be honest with you. If you have a small amount of chalk, I don't think you'd really notice the difference. I can see the difference, though. Really? Yeah. The uh, chalk part looks coarser. It did reflect the light as smoothly. This right. This is very, very smooth. Right. And that would probably be, I would think, because it's much, much more absorbent. Yeah. So that's interesting. So it does change the chemistry, right? And that's what um, Jim was trying to say to us, is don't mix too much. You're not going to be happy. It's going to be too much, right? Right. And that's what you want to avoid is just too much. So I am just doing the nail bed part. That color is pretty. They go good together. And then I'm going to cap it with clear and just more or less in the arch area in the apex and a little bit over top of the chalk, <laughs> the chalk free edge, just to protect the color and to make it strength stronger because I don't know if the chalk will weaken it a little bit. And I suppose it will a little bit and you probably could just leave it, but I always clear cap. I shouldn't say always, I mostly clear cap. And just right in there, and if anybody wants to know that particular method, don't go down to the cuticle. It's just in this uh, apex area. I really focus on that. And then I'll bring it over top of the whole thing. Just a nice, simple coating. Okay. There you have one chalk nail. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other colors. Okay, so I have applied them all as you can see, sculpted them, shaped them, perfected them, and now we are ready to dust and add the top coat. I wanna thank Ima for this great suggestion. Um, she asked me if we would address and talk about chalk in nails. I hope that's helping her with all that information with Jim and everything. And of course, this application. And now we're going to put the top coat on because that's me and cameraman's favorite part. Do you want to is... maybe take your mask off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am so Don't used to wearing now. a mask as a nail technician. And of course, with everything that's going on right now, I'm really used to it. Okay, so let's put on the top coat because like I say, that is our favorite part. Now, one thing I learned putting this on is that I probably should file it. It might be a better, smoother. Now, it might come off in chunks. I'm not really sure how it would actually come off, but it kind of added a cool effect. I actually don't mind it. It's like a happy mistake. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't mind it, but I found the darker colors tend to do it more. I found the light pink didn't really do it much at all. I don't know, maybe I was grinding it more. Cameraman ground a little bit for me. Maybe that was it, I don't really know. Yeah, if you want it to look smooth, you'd have to either use an e-file. Or, or maybe, a coffee yeah, grinder. Yeah, maybe the coffee grinder work. I mean, you have to try that. And we've seen people do that, do it with an e-file. So you know you can get it pretty smooth, but this is a different effect. So if you want it a little chunky, probably the e-file would make it smooth enough if you wanted that smooth look. And that was my intent. I wanted the smoother look. But like I say, it does look a little chunky in certain spots and it, it's fine. I actually don't mind it at all. And I will just do the thumb. I always do my thumb last, just a little tip when you're doing gel. I just don't want it to puddle, kind of pools on the one side of the thumb when it's in the lamp. So the longer it's laying on its side, the more likely you're gonna have it pool. Okay, nuke, okay. Now we check out the reveal shots. I think they're gonna be really pretty. Who would have thought chalk? 
a childhood memory would look so good in the nail. Jim did get back to me. He did test it. He said using about 5%. So just a pinch. So we were on target with just using a very little bit and you can see the color is gorgeous. If you love long nails like almond long and stiletto, check this video out where I add foil into my French styled nails. It's adorable.